The trick that you're about to see is one that even baffles me. Over here I have two strings. Both of them do silly things. For when one is long, the other is short. It's the strangest trick I've ever bought. Up and down, look at them go. How this works I just don't know. Now to some of you it might appear to be one string that goes through here. But when the sticks are opened, so, <laughs> this one still goes high when that goes low. I've worked out how it's done. The string works this way. It goes down one stick and through this end, just like me, round the bend. But if that's so, how can it be that still they work? This baffles me. Now, should this trick end up going wrong, and both the strings end up long, I keep a small solution here. I take a hair, I can do this trick a lot thanks to the lockdown, I take a hair and tie it here. Now when I pull this hair to the right, both the strings, they vanish from sight. Just one thing remaining now, get rid of this and take a bow. Hi everyone and welcome back to the showcase, thanks for tuning in once again. Uh, now before um, we get into uh, the, the show this week, we've got a good one for you, um, I'm just going to remind you of the puzzle that I set you in the last video. If you remember, I asked you to gather a few strange implements but not difficult to come by. Uh, you will need a hammer, Okay. you'll need a ruler, and you'll need a piece of string about, well, so long you'll tie it together and when you tie it together to make a hoop it needs to be the size of maybe a drinks coaster okay about this size not much bigger or smaller than that okay and uh, what you need to do with these items is the puzzle you have a table that's not solid underneath it has to be it has to have nothing underneath it has to have a ledge okay you put the ruler on the edge of the table the string goes over the ruler and all you have to do is to balance the hammer on the ruler without without allowing the ruler to topple off the edge of the table okay the ruler must stay in place balance the hammer on the ruler on the edge of the table it might seem impossible but i promise you there is a way of doing it and i'll show you how to do it at the end of the video so who have we got lined up this time well I am um, since moving back down to Cornwall um, last year I actually have joined um, a local magic circle here in Cornwall the Cornwall magic circle and I'm pleased to say I've uh, met some great new people and made some great new friends and um, our guest this week um, is a member of uh, the Cornwall magic circle um, and he's a fantastic magician and he's John Martin and uh, he's going to be showing some incredible stuff okay starting with this one here Good afternoon. So, uh, to start off with, I've taken out three small packets of cards, and the rest of the deck is here. Could you just give the rest of those cards a bit of a mix-up, a bit of a shuffle, a cut, if you want to throw one in there, it's entirely up to you. And give them a bit of a shuffle as well, yeah, so we know they're not in any particular order. Excellent. Now, I'm going to uh, just spread the cards out like so. And if you could take out three face down cards, they can be together, they can be uh, from different parts of uh, the pack, it's entirely up to you. One. And three. Okay. We'll get rid of these, we don't need them. Now these three, if you could just, again, just mix them up for me. Just take them down, just mix them so you don't know what order they're in. And then put one in front of each of these three piles. Okay, so this is pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. Uh, which one would you like to start with? Start with one. Pile number one. Okay. So at the moment, uh, you've selected this card for pile number one. Are you happy uh, for this one, or would you do you want to swap any of these around last minute? It's up to you. Uh, I guess I'll just these two around. You're going to swap them around. So this is now the card for pile number one. Yeah. 
This is a two of spades. If I just turn these over, you'll see that you've actually found the matching card for the other three twos to make four of a kind. Uh, which one would you want to go with next? Packet number two or packet number three? Number two. Number two. And are you happy with this card here or do you want to swap it for card number three? I'm happy with it. Happy with it. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you didn't change. Because this is the eight of diamonds. And the eight of diamonds goes with a one, two, three, four eights to make another three of a kind. To get a full house, this one will have to be the queen of diamonds to go with the other one, two, three, four queens. Thank you very much. And before we start, give the cards a bit of shuffle. And I'm going to give you some cards each. Okay? So I'll do some here, some here, so you've got about half each. And that should do. So if you just pick up your half, square them up for me. All right, keep them face down. And what I'd like you to do is to just kind of push off maybe four, five, six cards, something like that, yeah, uh, into a little packet, square them up and turn them face up and put them down on the map. Perfect. Now give the cards in your hand a little mix. And do the same thing again, but this time you're going to put them on each other's packets. All right, just four or five, six cards, however many you want. Yep, over there. That's it. And you're going to keep on doing that, mixing packets on your own, each other's, until you've got nothing left. Cool. That's it. Need to put those over there. And then put some there and some there. So we've still got about half ish each. So if you could pick them up and square them up and turn them face down. Excellent. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your top card off and sort of stab it somewhere into the middle of the packet here, but leave it about sticking out about half its length, just so we mark the uh, place. Perfect. And likewise, we could just take your top card and stab it halfway in, but leave it sticking out halfway, so we mark the place. Excellent. Uh, if you could lift everything off uh, above the sticking out cards and just pop them down here. And just square everything else up in your hands and drop those down here as well. Uh, would you mind just turning over any one of the top uh, cards? It's up to you. You've got an ace. That one goes down there. Please just turn over any one. Uh, you've got an ace. Okay. And if you turn that one over for me, you've got a, a red ace. And you turn this one over, you've also got the fourth red ace. Thank you very much. Ah, a fantastic magic effect there from John Martin from the Cornwall Magic Society. A fantastic Cornwall magician. Just goes to show that sometimes when you perform a card trick, it's not always the magician that does all the work. Sometimes you, the audience, you're the ones that do all of the work. Thanks, John. Fantastic effect. Now, this is a little... Um, close-up effect that I've been working on and uh, it's one that I like to perform when I go for a, a quick drink with some of my mates that's why it needs a glass and uh, it's a great trick to perform at the bar it's what's known as a bar trick come and take a look so it's called a bar trick because well it's just that really it's the perfect trick to do at a bar um, just some basic props here that you can find at a bar it's a glass this isn't a glass glass this is uh, a perspex I think it's called it is solid though yeah perfectly solid all the way around. Okay, normal glass, just not glass, not a glass glass. That's not confusing at all. And uh, we also have uh, a pound coin. Just ask someone for a pound coin. And uh, a penny. Pound coin and a penny. And um, this trick kind of defines why uh, it's called close-up magic, because I can come right up close to the person and I can say, right, hold on to the glass uh, by the base. So they hold it about here. OK, and I say, uh, right, we're going to take uh, the penny and I'm going to slide it all the way in. Well, not all the way in, but halfway into the glass. OK, and they can see it. They can all see it. It's completely surround. OK, I take the pound and I place that into the glass as well. Just like this. And I then have the spectator cover the mouth of the glass. So now the pound coin and the penny are both inside the glass. OK. And I ask the spectator, I say, uh, 
just pick one, either the pound or the penny. Now they can say either, they can say either the pound or the penny. Let's say uh, the penny for this case, okay? And I say, right, the penny, watch very carefully. Watch the pound and the penny. You said the penny, watch carefully. One, two, three. And you can see that the penny has actually dropped out of the glass, leaving only one coin, which is the pound. And there we go. That's a nice little bar. I love doing that trick. It's a uh, great trick. I love performing tricks that uh, involve just ordinary implements, everyday implements, impromptu props. Makes it a great effect. Just like these two elastic band effects from John Martin. Colour bands. Um, I've got two. This is a purple one and a yellow one. They're kind of one colour on one side, one colour on the colour on the other. So what you've got to do is give them a little snap and they uh, they swap places. So now I've got the yellow on the outside, the purple on the middle. In case you're not sure, you can just jump it back. So the purple on the outside, the yellow's in the middle. Uh, the yellow's across. So from your side, you can see purple on the top. Yellow doing a cross from my side. They're the opposite way around. You see, I'm looking at yellow on the outside and the purple cross in the middle. So, um, yeah, they're pretty cool. I think they're just on the market now. They're, I think they look really good. But, uh, yeah, let's sort of share them with you. Thank you very much. And it uses a Sharpie down here. Now, I want to make sure my hands don't come together, so I don't have to pick it up with my mouth. So, let me thread it on like so. So, the idea is we're going to try and get the uh, Sharpie to jump up the rungs of the ladder. So, what you've got to do is watch as it goes up the first one. See if we can get him on the second one. And then right to the top. Big jazz hand finish. Thank you very much.
Well, that's it for this week's showcase. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. Um, hope to see you next time. Before we go, there is uh, just a small matter of that puzzle that I set you. Uh, just a, another quick reminder of what you need. You need a hammer, a ruler, and a piece of string that's tied at the ends, making a small hoop about the size of a drinks coaster. Not much bigger or smaller than that. I hope you have been trying this one at home because uh, this one is a really good puzzle. This one really had me thinking when I first saw it. Just a quick reminder, you need a table that has a ledge, okay? Not a solid um, underneath, just um, a ledge that you can balance the ruler on the edge. And then the idea is you have to put the string on the ruler and then balance the hammer on the ruler without allowing the ruler to fall off the table, okay? No one's allowed to hold the ruler or the hammer and of course no sticky stuff, no glue, no sellotape, etc. Um, so there is a way of doing it and uh, I'm going to show you what that way is right now. Okay, so to show you how this uh, is done, I've come down to this uh, very odd angle and uh, need to sort of focus on the area just here. Um, as I say, you need a table. Um, a fold-away table uh, is best because, as I say, you need a table that has a ledge, okay? And just a quick reminder of the puzzle. The puzzle was to have the ruler on the edge of the table, to take the string and to put the string, oops, to put the string on the edge of the ruler like that. And of course, the idea was to balance the hammer onto the ruler like that, which of course can't be done as I will now demonstrate. Haha. <coughs> so, but there is a way of doing it. Okay. And it's actually easier than it might seem. What you do is you take the ruler and you place it on the edge of the table like so, leaving maybe about, I don't know, two inches like that. Then, you take the string and instead of hooking it right on the edge of the ruler like that, what you do is you bring the string right the way in like that, leaving about maybe a centimeter or two, okay? Now, you take the hammer, you thread it through the string with the weighted end towards the table, okay? And this is the important bit make sure that the end of the hammer comes into contact with the ruler at the end, okay? You might need to do some adjusting, okay, so the, the, the string doesn't slip, all right? And now it's just a question of finding the center of balance. You just need to bring the hammer in a little bit until eventually Just bring the hammer closer and closer and eventually the weight of the hammer will create its own center of gravity and there you go. The hammer is balancing on the ruler over the edge of the table. Brilliant, didn't it? <laughs> that really got me thinking, that one when I first saw it. There you go. So that's it. There you go. That's how you can balance a hammer on the edge of a table using a piece of string and a ruler. Simple. So that really is it for the uh, the showcase this week, folks. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you'll be joining us next time as well. My thanks, of course, to John Martin for allowing us to show some of his stuff. Hope you've enjoyed watching him. The links to some of his info will be included on the description uh, somewhere on the page here, as well as uh, links to info about me, my pages, and so on, as well as uh, links to uh, the old bakery studios in Truro, where the showcase will eventually be taking place. Um, and also the GoFundMe page will also be linked here, so please do um, pay us a visit and, and give what you can. Show us your support. Um, every little bit you can you can give can help us uh, when the showcase does start up, um, whenever that's going to be. But um, hopefully, um, with your help, we can get things started as soon as we can. So once again, from me, Jono, thanks very much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>